Good morning and welcome to online worship with Wesley Church. We are a United Methodist Church based in Springfield, Missouri, and we're excited to welcome you to worship this morning. This past week, we shared with you and celebrated our partnership with Convoy of Hope. Check out this short update with Jeff Anderson on Convoy's work and how we as Wesley Church played a significant role along the way. Hello, Wesley Church, Jeff Anderson with Convoy of Hope, giving you a quick update on Convoy's COVID-19 response. Our trucks are crisscrossing the nation right now, delivering help and hope to those who need it most. We've had over 700 requests for tractor trailer loads full of supplies, food, products that people need right now. And today we've crossed the 7.5 million meal mark. And that is in thanks to your partnership, your generosity and your prayers. We so appreciate all that Wesley Church is doing. You have given sacrificially, you continue to give, and it just blows me away today. So on behalf of the entire team, thank you on behalf of those in need right now. Thank you and God bless you. This week, we launched two new Bible studies through our Facebook page. If you're interested in joining, it's never too late. Check them out by going to our Facebook page and under the groups tab, you can watch both videos from earlier this week. We also want to share a new and simple way to sign up for Right Now Media. All you need to do is text Right Now Wesley Methodist to 41411. Remember, this is a totally free gift to you from our church. We hope that you will find it helpful and comforting during this unique time we are all facing. And don't forget to join us again for a mingle with Mike and Megan following worship. We are also excited to have a guest this week joining us from Convoy of Hope, Jeff Anderson. So bring your questions for Jeff, bring your favorite board game ideas for Pastor Mike, and join us after worship on Facebook. This morning, we will hear a sermon from Pastor Mike about true community for our second week in the sermon series, When Storms Come. Let us come together and worship. Join me in our call to worship. Once again, we enter into a virtual gathering space. We worship together in spirit and in truth, though not in person. We pray, sing, and listen to God's word. Despite the fear that pervades our community, we trust Christ's peace, a peace given freely despite our doubts and fears. We know the Holy Spirit is among us, blowing with a hopeful wind of change. We feel the presence of Christ, the one who died and rose again and brings us eternal life. We celebrate that through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are together. We are one body. We experience the joy of Easter morning when we celebrate our part in the community of Christ. Amen. Please join us in singing number 133 in the hymnal, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms.
friends. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad that you could join us. My name's Mike McIntyre, and today we're delighted to have you with us as we continue uh, our look at when storms come and dealing with this pandemic and the issues that arise from it. So we're glad you're with us, and, and today's lesson is taken from the second chapter of Acts, verses 42 through 47. And I invite you to join with me in, in the Word of God. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Friends, do you remember that old silly TV show called Gilligan's Island? Chances are many of you are like me that I can't remember it when it was actually on CBS. I just know it from when it went off network syndication, when I'd watch it after school or whatever. But for those of you who've never ever seen an episode, I'll bet you can still sing the theme song from Gilligan's Island. Did you know that you can sing Amazing Grace? to Gilligan's Island. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see, was blind, but now I see. Bonus, totally free, you're welcome. Well, the show ran from 1964 to 1967, and it was a sitcom about a group of people who went out for a pleasure cruise one afternoon and got swept up by this horrible storm and they got marooned on an uncharted, deserted island. And I can assure you that Gilligan's Island never would be mistaken for quality entertainment. And, and there were very, very, very few of the episodes that, that you could consider emotionally touching. But I remember there was one that kind of tugged at the heartstrings. In this, Gilligan got his feelings hurt. And so he left the, the camp with the rest of them and went all the way across to the other side of the island and decided to live all alone in a cave. And in a very short amount of time, he became miserable. He was so lonely and he, he wanted his friends so badly. Well, the interesting thing is the rest of the group were miserable as well. They found how badly they missed him. They, they missed his gentleness. They missed his kindness. They even missed his, his, his silly screw-ups. And so one day, the skipper, who was Gilligan's buddy, decided he was going to go ahead and go across the island and move in the cave with Gilligan, just so Gilligan didn't have to be alone. And then one by one, unbeknownst to the others, every single one of them did the same thing until all of them ended up living in the cave with Gilligan. And what they discovered was a very important truth. And it was this, that an uncomfortable cave with fellowship was much to be preferred over a comfortable house in isolation. And that really shouldn't surprise us, friends, because we humans, we are social critters. That's just simply the way we were made. Now, there are some animals that were made to live on their own. Tigers are solitary animals. Skunks are solitary animals. Bears are as well. But there are some animals that were created hardwired to live in packs like wolves and like elephants and like human beings. We were simply made by God to be uh, in packs, in relationship with one another. And if you think about it, that need for fellowship goes deep into our DNA. 
If you, if you look at our penal system, the worst punishment that, that you can give to even a hardened criminal is solitary confinement. We don't like being all on our own. Why? Because it's contrary to our very nature. We were made to be in fellowship. We need fellowship. And to be happy and to be whole in life, we need to be together. That's just the way we were made. I remember my grandfather telling me he was a, a CB in the Second World War. And so the CBs were always the first ones on the island, even before the Marines, because the CBs went to create landing strips and uh, cut down the trees so that the landing gear could get there. And so uh, Grandpa was always there with just a, a handful of men getting things ready for the invasion. And they had such a, a uh, lonely life those of them, um, that he experienced something kind of uh, beautiful, I think, in a way. See, Grandpa could cut hair, and so he was kind of elected to be the barber of, of the group. And so he started experiencing guys coming to him all the time to get their hair cut, even when they didn't need a haircut. And so he started uh, to wonder why this was until finally he just asked somebody, I just cut your hair. Why are you here? And the guy said, because when I get my hair cut is the only time I get touched by another human being. And I was like, wow. They, they so longed for the touch of a human that they would just do something they didn't even need to do in order to acquire it. You see, I think that's one reason this pandemic is so hard on us especially for those of you who live all alone. See, we weren't meant to live in isolation. We weren't created uh, to be alone. We were created for fellowship. If you think about it, what was the very first thing that our Savior did when he began his public ministry? The Holy Spirit called him into the wilderness to, to get instructions from the Father. And as soon as that was over, what did he do? He formed a group of people to be in fellowship with him and in fellowship with one another. See, that's who we are as humans, and that's who we are as Christians. We are people who live together in fellowship. So this past week, I did some research to find um, every time the word together is used in scriptures from Acts through Revelation, just to see what we Christians do together. And what I found is that Christians meet together, pray together, worship together, share material things with each other, eat together, mentor one another, plan together, work together, stand together. You see, from the very, very beginning of our faith, Christianity has always been about fellowship, friends. Fellowship with God, and fellowship with each other. And when Jesus was once asked, what is the most important of all the commandments, he didn't even have to think about it. He just immediately went right to the most important commandment of them all. And he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So think about it. When Jesus was asked what is the most important thing that we human beings can do, he said, be in fellowship with God and be in fellowship with one another. That's who we are as people. That's who we are as followers of Christ. Okay, so fellowship is obviously enormously important to us. So I'm going to ask you, when you hear the word fellowship, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I think for some people, fellowship means a, a, a nice gathering of friends where we affirm each other and, and we kind of, through our company and laughing together, soothe our frayed nerves and, and provide relief from the stress of, of everyday life. 
I think for others, if I would say fellowship, they would think of a, of a, a, a nice meal together or a time where we can gather as friends to do something in particular, even if it doesn't matter what it is, anything from going to a ball game to, to, to going to a spiritual retreat. I think if I would say what's fellowship to some people, they would say it's, it's chatting with my friends in between services with a cup of coffee in one hand and a donut in the other hand. And you know what? All these things are fellowship and all of these things are good and all of these things are to be, so, uh, to be celebrated. But none of these things capture what the New Testament means when it uses the word fellowship. The word fellowship, as used in the New Testament, is literally defined this way, a sacred communion. And a sacred communion is what happens when the body of Christ gathers to participate together in God's grace. See, fellowship describes a community in which each individual chooses to come together to pledge to share with each other, to support one another, to bear one another's burdens, and to hold each other accountable so that we all of us together build each other up in relationship with Jesus Christ and with each other. Fellowship, friends, in other words, is very Christ-centered. It's always and forever Christ-centered if it's the kind of fellowship we're talking about in the New Testament. Listen again to, to how the Bible describes what fellowship is. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. See, fellowship is a oneness of purpose, a oneness of mind, a oneness of a cause where we set aside our personal agendas to be able to serve the greater good, which of course is always the kingdom of God. So the Christian fellowship is based on the fact that together, we all of us are living for Jesus, and because we're all of us living for Jesus, we're all of us loving each other through the presence of Jesus. The Bible says, we proclaim to you what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. So fellowship is, is enormously important. So we need to ask ourselves, how do we do that in the midst of this pandemic? How can we be in fellowship with each other when we have to be in social isolation? How can we be the body of Christ for each other when we can't physically be together? Well, the first thing we need to do is to remember what we talked about last week, and that is the fact that God is with us. Our God is the great Emmanuel, God who is with us now and always and forever. And friends, our fellowship, remember, is not based upon our physical presence. Our fellowship is based upon what did we discover? It's, it's based upon Jesus Christ. So if Jesus Christ is with us always, and our fellowship is based upon Jesus Christ, then what we need to remember is that, that when we choose to open ourselves up to the presence of Jesus Christ together, then we are brought together, even if we're physically apart, our physical presence isn't necessary to have true fellowship in Jesus Christ. You see, as followers of Jesus, we have been given this glorious gift called the Holy Spirit, which means we have been equipped by Jesus himself to have the very, and I mean literal, presence of Jesus living inside of us to offer each other the presence we need in very practical ways, okay? So let me share with some with you some of those 
practical ways to be in fellowship even when we're physically distant, okay? First of all, and most important, that's why it's first, we can be together in prayer. And friends, listen to me. It doesn't matter if, if, if we're halfway across the world from each other. If we are joining together in prayer, we are entering into the same presence, the literal same presence of Jesus Christ. And so when we pray, we are entering into Jesus' presence together, together. And friends, there's an overwhelming need for prayer right now. You know that this pandemic has hit people so hard between, between the, the medical needs and the financial needs that are going on. There is an enormous, enormous need for prayer right now. And, and, and prayer binds us together in fellowship because we come together in the presence of Jesus. So what that means is, is we have an overwhelming need to be in prayer. We can help others and we can be together when we choose to go into God's presence to be in prayer. And another practical way that we can practice fellowship, even in social isolation, is by breaking bread together in the only way that we can. Okay, let me explain. Because you know what? Friends, as Methodists, let's face it, we're legendary. We are legendary for our casseroles. So if you are in a low-risk category, here's one way that you can break bread with others. You can make a casserole, and you can be praying for the person you're making a casserole for when you're making this casserole, when you're breaking the bread to make this casserole. And you don't have to have physical contact, okay? You can simply take the casserole to the person that you made it for and maybe like a disposable aluminum pan, something like that, and you just leave it on the front porch when they know you're leaving it on the front porch and so then they can get it and we don't have to break our social isolation but we can break bread together when we do that. Or in another way, if you know of somebody um, who, who needs help with groceries or who needs help with something like that, you can go do the grocery shopping for them and once again, have it all bagged up and put it on their front porch. We don't have to violate the need to, to, to be in social isolation to be able to truly break bread together. That's a wonderful way that we, we can do it. And another way that we can share fellowship right now, friends, is we can start to think of our healthcare workers the way we thought of our first responders during 9-11. Remember how wonderful we were for them, man? We were doing so much stuff for them, and we still should because they're still heroes. But I think we need to remember that our medical workers are heroes as well because these doctors and nurses and technicians, you know what? They are, in a way, entering into a burning building every single solitary day so that they can keep us safe, so that they can keep us healthy. And so we should be supporting them. We should be praying for them by name. We should be bringing meals to them, bringing groceries to them, offering them childcare if they need it, supporting them in whatever way we can. You know, they're doing so much for us. We need to, in turn, uh, give the love right back. And you know, another way that we can uh, help each other and be in fellowship is to financially support each other. You know, one of the huge effects of this pandemic is not just medical, it's financial. And so the young coffee shop owner may not be sick, but her business is on life support. And if we all stop ordering the coffee from her, she's gonna go under. So we need to do what the authorities tell us as far as, as honoring the, the, the right thing with the social isolation, but we can still choose to be there for local businesses and order carry out to keep them going. You know what? America runs on small business and that's not a political slogan, friends. It's just an economic reality. And if we can be there for each other, we can share that fellowship of love and help each other out. You know, it's not just our bodies that need to be healthy. Our souls need to be healthy as well. And we need fellowship and we need 
the hope that fellowship brings if we are going to be healthy. You know, the human capacity to endure even the most grueling circumstances is incredible. As long as we have hope, as long as we have something to hang on to, we are so strong to be able to, to endure. And so for Christians, this means that we need to remind ourselves that Jesus is our hope, not just in the sweet by and by, but in this life right here and right now. And our faith community, our fellowship, gives us the hope that we need to be able to endure. So we need to come together, friends, even in social isolation, as many times as we can. Even if that just means through online presence. Here at Wesley, we have several online classes. And in addition, some of our Sunday schools are meeting together through Zoom. There's, there's so many opportunities for you, friends, and you need to seize those. Consider this to be an amazing time to experience and remember the fact that the church has never been about a building. The church has always been about a people a people in fellowship brought together through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, we need each other. We do. And by God's grace, we have each other. We do. And we need to celebrate that for all we're worth. We celebrate fellowship because of the power that fellowship brings to us. The fellowship of love that we share with each other is a gift from God. You know, I can't imagine trying to get through this without my brothers and sisters here at Wesley carrying me. The glory of the church is that when I'm weak, I have you to lean on to get me through. And in turn, when you're weak, you have me to lean on to get through. The truth is none of us can make it on our own. And thank God we don't have to. Christ gave us each other to lean on. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sometimes in our lives we all have pain we all have sorrow always tomorrow lean on me when you're not strong and i'll be your friend i'll help you carry on for it won't be long till i'm gonna need somebody to Follow your pride If I have a thing You need to borrow for No one can fill Those of your needs That we don't let you Lean on me When you're not strong And I'll be your friend
come together during this time in prayer, even when we're apart and distant, our prayers are heard together by our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ, we ask for your Spirit to come upon us. In this time of concern and maybe even panic, we run to you, the one we can trust in. You are trustworthy. You keep your promises. You have proved your trustworthiness. We give you thanks for the scriptures that you have given us to reveal yourself more to us, that we can study them and find comfort in how you have always been with your people, that you will never leave or forsake us, that you love us so much that you sent your son to die for us. Lord, we thank you for Jesus who overcame death, and right now, that is the fear of our world. And so we pray, oh God, that you would teach our world your triumphant victory over death. May your word be proclaimed boldly during this time. May lives be lived in a way that share Christ with others. Lord, use our messages as a church, as members of this church, to share your love with the world. We pray for our world, our world that is hurting we pray, O oh Lord, that you would stop the spread of the virus. We pray, Lord, that you would protect your people and keep them safe when they are working on the front lines. We pray, Lord, that those who are sick may be made well, that you as our great physician may be at work in them. We pray for those who are grieving, for those who are heartbroken over being apart from their loved one while they are struggling. We ask for your peace and your grace to come upon them. May you surround them with your presence in a way that they have never felt before. Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you that you are guiding and leading scientists and, and companies who are working towards vaccines. May they listen to your voice. May you be with us in each of our homes. May you surround us in a way that makes us feel always with you, that helps us to know that you give us the strength for each day. Help us, O oh Lord, take one day at a time and to move into your grace and all that you have for us. We pray this together the way that you taught us to pray, O oh Lord, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. Thank you so much for joining us for worship this morning. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit our website. There you can submit prayer requests, share your ties and gifts with the church, and stay up to date with all of the Wesley information. We look forward to seeing you again next week. We'll see you soon.